YouTube, what's good? <clears throat> Send you back at it again with another video. So today, before we even get started, look at what they did. They, I didn't actually check until yesterday, but they finally fixed the SKS camo issue where now you can see that I have gold on my SKS with the little gold minigun that's so clean. Uh, so now we can see what the platinum looks like. Obviously, we got platinum. Well, we don't have platinum, but you can see what it looks like. I'll go and get platinum at some point this week when the uh, shoot the ship 24 7 comes around i don't understand why they just don't bring shipment 24 7 back it kind of makes no sense to me it seems like they're avoiding shipment 24 7 but they need to just bring shipment 24 7 and no one wants to play shoot house uh, I, I i can guarantee you no one wants to play shoot house we're all asking for shipment just give a shipment it's not that difficult uh and then you got damascus i'm not a big fan of damascus but uh, on some weapons it looks amazing, on some weapons it just, it, I don't know. I don't feel like it really looks good on the SKS. But no, I mean, I'll probably use it anyway just because, you know, I got it. So, today we're going to be taking a look at my settings. And uh, I'll be explaining, you know, the philosophy behind my settings while we're going through it. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and let's hop into this video. So, something that I'm pretty sure is going to come to a surprise, well, come to the surprise of a lot of you, is the fact that I don't have a scuff controller. I don't use a scuff controller. That doesn't mean that I don't like scuff controllers. That doesn't mean that I would not use a scuff controller. I just don't have one. Um, I've never had one, and I've always felt like I didn't need to have one. Prior to, you know, scuff controllers being real popular way back in the early, you know, 2010s and stuff like that, I used to run around thinking, oh man, you know, people just buy scuff controllers because they're, you know, they're trash, a Call of Duty or whatever game they're playing, and, uh, you know, they, they need scuff controllers to enhance their gameplay, and you know what, to some extent, that is true, a lot of people cannot play on a regular controller as well as they do on a scuff controller, and when you tell them, oh man, you know what, go back and go play on a regular controller and tell me how much of a difference that is, they sit over here and they, oh man, I can't drop shot with the paddle on the back and blah. I'm like, bro, I do everything that you do on a scuff controller on a regular controller. Now, imagine what I could do with a scuff controller. Seriously. You know. So, I don't like to hear people with scuff controllers complaining about missing shots and all that stuff. Like, bro, you got an extra thumbstick with the control. You got a heightened base controller thumbstick with a control freak slapped onto that thumbstick. You got trigger stops on your l2 and your uh your r2 you got paddles on the back so you don't have to move your you never have to stop aiming like i don't want to hear you complain at all at all <laughs> and i still don't like people with scuff controllers be killing me when they sit here and they start complaining about missing shots and you know not aiming correctly and all that i'm like that's just on you chief you got the best controller in the game right now and you still can't aim straight i don't know what to tell you so yeah I'm not hating on scuff controllers. Scuff controllers are fantastic. I love the design of them, but man, I can't stand when a person with a scuff controller complains about, you know, being garbage at the game. It's like, bro, so what you're telling me is that you dropped 120 something bucks on a scuff controller and you thought that, you know, overnight you were just going to be god tier at the game? Nah, that, that's natural skill, my guy. Oh, yeah, get good. Get good, chief. It ain't that difficult. Get good. <laughs> so, we got bumper jumper tactical and, uh, Oh, by the way, I should probably put a disclaimer that that was not supposed to be rude or mean. That's I just hear a lot of people with scuff controllers complaining about, you know, being garbage. And I'm just like, bro, I hope you, re I really hope you didn't expect to just buy a brand new controller with all these enhancements. And then all of a sudden be God to you because that's not how it works. You got to put time and effort into this. I'm running a regular controller with, you know, rubber on the sticks. It's probably about to fall off soon. I don't have trigger stops to make my shots come out faster. I don't have paddles on the back to drop shot, jump shot, drag scope. I don't have all this sensitivity enhancement thumbsticks on here. I don't have blacked out button. You know, I don't have all of that. I got a regular controller and I'm playing, the, you know, as best as I can. And I'm not even sweating. That's the funny thing. I'm really not playing to my best ability because in most of my gameplays, I'm not sweating. I'm just, I'm as calm and I'm just rolling through doing what I do. <laughs> you haven't seen competitive send you yet. Yeah, you, you can wait for that one. That That's coming soon. But anyway, that, that was way too long. So, we got the bumper jumper tactical. We got the default stick layout. Now, here's the thing. 
on my horizontal stick sensitivity i don't like having it too high and i don't like having it too low right now it's at the perfect setting for me personally where i'm able to lock on to my targets but not overshoot you never want to overshoot a target and uh, having my sensitivity on 7.7 is pretty perfect i feel pretty good with it i might change it up pretty soon but for right now it's pretty smooth now for the ads sensitivity multiplier the thing is I might change the high zoom because I feel like when I zoom in with thermal scopes on, you know, the thermal dual power uh, variable zoom scope that I run on my AX50 for Warzone, I feel like when I zoom in, the the uh, the zoom speed gets really really slow, and I like to be able to lock onto the targets just a little bit faster. So I might change this up. I don't know. Now here's a pretty important part, the aim response curve. This is as close as I've been able to get to a PC experience. For those of you who play on PC, you already know the advantage that you guys have, so I don't want to hear none of y'all sitting over here talking about, you know, I don't need a bunch of Dr. Disrespects in here talking about, oh, you know, aim assist on controller beats PC every time. Y'all for years have been sitting over here on PC talking about, oh man, console players are whack, they got aim assist. PC Master Race, we don't need aim assist, we can control and blah 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 blah. Like, y'all, I don't want to hear all of that nonsense. I really don't. This dude sat up here and started streaming one week in the war zone on crossplay, and all of a sudden, console players are god tier because of aim assist. We're not god tier because of aim assist, bro just can't aim. We all know that. We all know it's for sure. A lot of PC players are sitting over here complaining about, you know, console players having aim assist, so they go slap a control. Here, here's what kills me. They'll slap a controller on a PC so they can have aim assist. So they're complaining. They were sitting over here just last year. Oh, man, you know, <laughs> the console players are garbage. They got aim assist. They need all of this to help them. It's like, bruh, you're darn right we need aim assist. You guys are running around on 100 to 200 frames that you can sit over here and manipulate any way you want to. You got maxed out FOV so you can see crap before we even get a chance to see it. And then on top of all of that, y'all can do a 360 in 0.2 seconds, log on to, lock on to the target, and then drag scope the guy across the map. And you expect somebody to do that on a controller? With no aim assist? With no FOV? capped at a, at a at a specific frame rate no i don't want to hear a single pc player complaining about them getting their cheeks clapped on crossplay because they're actually running into good console players all right that's the last thing i want to hear but little rant is over we got the aim response curve at linear and that's specifically because that's the closest thing that i could get to a pc experience when it comes to the response of the screen when I use my thumbstick that's basically all this is when you're using your view stick the R or you know whatever stick it is on Xbox the speed of the response when you turn left the speed of that is determined by whatever you have your aim response curve on and me putting it on linear has gotten that as close to a PC experience as possible which is why I'm able to just you know turn on people on a dime so definitely run linear if you want to uh, try to even the playing field a little bit Controller vibration, I leave that on, that just doesn't bother me. If you don't like vibration, then by all means, turn it off. Uh, obviously, aim assist is on standard. I've tried precision. I really like precision, but I just left it on standard. Uh, weapon mount activation, obviously. ADS and melee, I don't want it on any other button because I don't mount. And if I do, I need to know which button I'm going to use to do that. Uh, now, the only other thing in here that's really important is that you need to put on contextual tap. If you don't have contextual tap on, then you're asleep. You are taking a nap and you're not waking up until Thursday. Here's the reason why you need to have contextual tap on. If you play Apex or Fortnite and you're used to running around tapping square and everything just kind of falls into your pockets and you're able to move on, then you need to put on contextual tap because that's the only way you're going to be able to do it inside of Modern Warfare. When Warzone shipped, they did not have this option. And I believe like shortly, like really short after that, it was, it was a hot fix or a patch or something like that. And the option was in there. So the only thing that really changes when you run contextual tap is the fact that you're able to just tap a button and pick up everything. But you have to hold your reload button to reload your weapon, which I'm perfectly fine with. I actually really like that. I feel like that's the way that it should be in base game. And that's the way that I run inside of ground war multiplayer if I ever step foot in multiplayer. But Warzone specifically, contextual tap is a must now that's pretty much all for the general well the controller we slide over to the general uh the brightness is at 42 turn your film grain off i don't care turn it off 
you do not need it it does nothing but blur everything at a distance and it makes everything looks like it's over pixelated and you're looking at a 1970s picture that was just sat in water and vinegar for too long so turn off the film grain you don't need it it just does nothing but annoy you while you're playing another thing that you need to turn off which i don't understand is even applicable to uh multiplayer it really shouldn't be is your world motion blur and your weapon motion blur turn that turn it off turn it off no way in the world should you be playing warzone or any kind of multiplayer game where turning your camera blurs your screen that makes no sense at all nowhere in there should you be able to sit over there and do that so definitely for sure just turn it off get rid of it you don't need it now i personally chose the minimap square shape just because i like the square not only that but you do gain a little bit more knowledge you see how with the circle you can't really see the out of bounds area and you can barely see you know behind the building on the left with the square minimap i can see both out of bounds areas i can see where the map ends at and i can see behind the building so i get just a little bit more knowledge off of the square map than uh, i do with the circle map and just even having that little bit of extra knowledge is really important especially in warzone because that can make the difference between you knowing or not knowing if a person is sitting in a corner or not or if a red dot is on top of a building you may not be able to see that on a circle map but with the square map you might be able to just see the edge of that red dot and you know yeah there's a guy down there so uh definitely mini map shape on square if you want the most knowledge possible uh, obviously the mini map rotation is on that's just personal preference you can turn it off if you want to and then uh all the extra nonsense we don't have now i continuously che uh tweak with the audio settings because uh for some reason man i don't understand what infinity ward be going through I, I really don't if it ain't broke don't fix it i'm gonna need them to understand that like all game developers in general if it ain't broke don't try to fix it they sat over here and they wanted to revolutionize footsteps they should have waited until the ps5 came out because the ps5 has 3d audio that's where you do all your experimentation the ps4 audio system wasn't broken and they broke it trying to fix it if it ain't broke don't fix it it's that simple i can't hear footsteps the precision airstrikes sound like they're literally right next door to my house for some reason people shooting a building over sound like they're in a canyon and the red dot doesn't even show up on the radar I can hear sniper shots from the airport while I'm sitting over here in the military base and I'm looking at, you know, the quarry thinking, oh, that's where the shot's coming from. Let me go down there. I go down there and there's four squads fighting and not a single sniper. Like, no, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. This has been the worst audio experience that I've ever had in a Call of Duty game. And it's a terrible thing when you spend 100 to 200 bucks on a headset to get the best audio experience. And then you install the game and you realize that the audio is just natively broken because they thought that they were doing something special if it ain't broke yet again don't try to fix it because it wasn't broken in the first place all we ask for is to be able to hear footsteps and for all the rest of the sound to be balanced so that we can pull campers out of the corner and that we can hear somebody who's trying to you know execute me from two feet behind after they land sometimes i don't even hear parachutes landing it could be as quiet as a church house mouse and i will not hear a parachute landing behind me whose idea was that because whoever that was i'm gonna need you to let them go let them go let them go because they don't need to be there they breaking this they're breaking your system infinity ward anyway we got the home theater auto mix audio mix that's pretty much the best one i could find now mind you i'm running a steel series arctis pro through a t40 uh astro mix amp into the okato into the monitor etc etc i got about three different equalizers on here and i've messed with the steel series settings inside of the pc to get the best audio experience and i still can't hear footsteps half the time which lets me know that it's not my headset it's not the it's not the mix amp it's literally infinity ward's audio system that needs to be fixed that should not be a thing i should not have to do all of that to sit over here and try to hear a single footstep that i still cannot hear anyway i turned down the master volume because everything is too loud too loud i turned off the music because i do youtube so having music on obviously is copyrighted can't have that don't need the copyright strikes dialogue i turned down specifically for ground war because the dude the in-game narrator sounds fantastic but the dude is so loud that sometimes you might be able to actually hear a footstep if his volume is turned down i know weird right now the effects volume 
I'm still messing with this because I feel like the end game effects is tied to footsteps, but I also feel like it's tied to precision airstrikes. That's the main reason why I turned it down, because of precision airstrikes. Every single time I'm in Warzone and a precision airstrike is either anywhere near me, it sounds like it's right next to my window. Just, I don't, dude, it's so loud. I can't, it's gotten to the point where sometimes I'll be doing commentary and I will stop talking when an airstrike flies over because I cannot hear myself talk through my own headset. Why is that a thing? That makes zero sense whatsoever. Nothing in the game should be that loud to the point where in real life I stop talking to let the precision airstrike pass through the game. Like, come on now. Juggernaut music I turned off because obviously the music in the Juggernaut is copyrighted. You know what? I feel another rant. I feel like they need to take this into consideration that a lot of people do content creation for their games. Stop putting copyrighted music inside of the game. Because, you know, maybe I would have liked to enjoy a little heavy metal or deathcore inside of my juggernaut y'all know me i'm a metalhead my intro and my outro has some of my favorite songs in it but i can't play the juggernaut music as good as it sounds because it's copyrighted stop putting copyrighted music inside of your game so that the content creators can thoroughly enjoy the content that they're creating it's not that difficult then we have hit marker sound effects that's just personal preference you can put it on whatever you want to i like classic sounds pretty clean and uh Obviously, another thing that you need to turn off is the voice chat effect. Turn your voice chat effects off. If you're in voice chat, like in-game voice chat, for some reason they have like this radio stereo effect over it, military radio effect over it. It's cool if you want to roleplay, but you know, if you're really just trying to get the best audio experience out of your voice chat, just turn it off. Well, without further ado, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Sorry about the rants along the way, but you know what? Sometimes I get to talking about some of these topics and I just get heated because some of the decisions that were made were just dumb and I don't understand how they even made it through testing but anyway like I said hopefully you guys enjoyed the video make sure you leave a like make sure you subscribe if you're not part of the community already and I'll catch you guys in the next video take care